I'm John Schellenhuber. I am director of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. I also happen to be scientific advisor to the German government. Great. Now, if you were to sum it up in two, in you know, a few sentences, what's the biggest issue facing humanity right now? I mean, I would call it the sustainability crisis, if you like. So it's. Uh, combination of climate change, obviously. It's the question of how we will feed nine billion people during the century. Yeah? It's the question of uh, land use, urbanization. So in a sense, you have entwined a number of crises, if you like, and they all tell us we cannot do business as usual anymore. Okay. Now, do you, do you think the Earth can hold the nine billion projected people? Actually, that will be subject of my talk <laughs> uh, on first day. I mean, carrying capacity of the planet. I mean, how many people can live in a decent way on this planet if we use our resources in a careful way? Yeah? Um, I do think that we can feed nine billion people, but we will have to make big changes. What do those big changes look like? It could be simply switching to a new diet, so getting away from beef. Uh, uh, that would help a lot, but I think the way we use our land has to be different. But the precondition for everything is, of course, to stabilize the climate. I mean, if we have unbridled climate change and this planet would get warmer by, say, 5 degrees centigrade by the end of the century, then it will not be able to sustain something like a higher form of civilization. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Are, are you concerned that that's the reality that we're facing? I mean, I just calculated recently with sort of with using most of the climate models, what's the, I call it the Russian roulette probability to avoid dangerous climate change. You know, Russian roulette is that you have got a gun and you have just one bullet in one chamber, uh, it's a six shooter and you put it at your head and, and pull the trigger. So you have a five in six chance of surviving. Nevertheless, nobody plays Russian roulette because people think the risk is too high actually. Uh. Actually, in order to achieve at least a Russian roulette chance, to avoid dangerous climatic change, we would have to reduce global emissions by the middle of the century by 80%. Uh, and for the US and Germany and UK, it means complete, almost complete decarbonization. Uh. Now you can judge for yourself whether this is a fair chance or not. Uh. But if you listen to what people say about Copenhagen conference, I mean the big political conference uh, that will happen here in December, when nobody's really even daring to mention such, such a target, uh, which still would not provide us a brilliant chance. Uh, so it's tricky. How, how crucial is the conference in December towards mm. making or breaking this? I mean, it is absolutely essential to create trust into our international political system that we are at least trying to handle the problem, uh, to take care of the problem, because what we had in climate change was the Kyoto Protocol. I actually, I was there in 1997 when it was negotiated in Japan, and it created a bureaucratic monster in the end, which did very little for protecting the climate. Of course, the US didn't sign up to it, and other countries didn't pursue or didn't honor their targets and words. But a huge disappointment has been created, uh, alienation of many people. And so I think this conference would just be a proof of concept that the world is able to handle the problem. Uh. So probably we will not get all the right targets, as I just mentioned, but the process will be restarted in a much more reliable, in, in a much more motivating, inspiring way. So. This conference in Copenhagen could send out a big message to the world. Eh? But the message in the end would be, now we are finally on track, we got rolling, but this is just the first part of the journey, clearly. Eh? So there need to be many successful Copenhagen conferences 
to come. Now, ha have we had any successful climate change conferences in the past? I mean, the Kyoto conference, in a sense, was hailed as a step forward, a, a tiny little step, but I don't think it delivered much. We had agenda setting conferences, but we never had really a climate change conference, a climate protection conference that uh, implemented a way to solve the problem. No, we haven't. Uh, so hopefully this will be the first of its kind, but believe me, it's not the last one. Huh? Yeah. Do you think there's a bit of a conflict with human nature and what we've done with business and civilization mm -hmm. and the world we depend on? I mean, just look at the current economic crisis. Huh? I mean, in a sense, this was the, the paradigm, the mindset of post-Second World War, uh, that competition, free market, greed, what have you, unlimited profits, uh, the system will spin forever that way, yeah? and everybody will become wealthier, and, and the system will even transgress the, the natural limits of, 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 of the laws of physics and economics and what have you. Yeah? And this cannot work. So in a sense, what we feel now is that you live on your substance, on your capital, and you are sort of just always taking loans on the future when the system will crash finally. Yeah? In principle, everybody knew it would crash, but nobody knew when. So most people said, well, the music is playing, and on, so on and on. And this is just a little example actually as compared to the climate crisis what is ahead of us huh? so this economic depression which is ahead of us could learn us many lessons could teach us many lessons actually yeah? that you can only spend what you have earned before and the same is true for natural capital i mean i give you one number which tells us how crazy the situation is we are in i mean we are currently using as much fossil fuels, so gas and oil and so on, uh, every year as nature created through geochemical processes over one million years. So you're spending your capital at a, at a rate which is one to one million actually. Yeah? This cannot last forever, obviously not. Huh? So we are in an absolutely no analog situation now and we have to wake up and say no, this cannot be the way forward. Uh, we have to change our course and we have to quickly, for example, switch to renewable energy yeah, because the sun is providing us all the energy we need. But we have become very complacent. We thought cheap oil is there forever. Yeah? And I think this is the lesson we learn from the current economic crunch. Yeah? That Sustainability is not just a word, it's not just a green blah blah, it is our reality. Yeah? It seems like these problems have been around for so long, people have been talking about them over and over mm. again. Why haven't we done anything about it yet? Mm. I mean, the question is, who are we? Yeah? Is it individuals? Some individuals have changed even their life. Yeah? Uh, and, and try to avoid all types of emissions and uh, don't tr tr try to not to, to impact the natural resources. We can be our representatives sitting on Capitol Hill or in the House of Parliament and so on. And we, that's business people, uh, people who have special interests and so on. The problem is that I think at every level, whether it's government or individuals or business, you have simply not learned the lesson that short-term thinking can provide a lot of good and a lot of benefits for you, but you, will, you may miss the really crucial train in the end. So it's long-term thinking which has, in a sense, to guide us. Uh? And as you said, we had problems of this type of natural resources for hundreds of years. But we always were drawing only short-term conclusions from that. Eh? Now we have a new situation with science. I mean, I'm a climate scientist, eh? so we have the chance to make not predictions, but projections. So what could be plausible futures of this planet? Eh? 
could have a five degrees plus world or a two degrees plus world. So in principle, we can lay out how the future may look like. And it's a menu and you can pick, so to speak. Yeah? So for the first time, through scientific evidence, you can make sort of enlightened, enlightened choices about the future. Right? And so long-term thinking should accompany us in everything we do. Uh, but this is really changing the mindset. Uh, this is a new paradigm of dealing with complicated problems. Uh, always think of the long-term implications. And of course, you can ask yourself whether you do it, and I can ask myself, and you can ask your next door neighbor, and you can ask your uh, politician. Uh, do you really, are you really willing to be guided by these long-term considerations? And most people will tell you, I should, but I don't. That's the situation. <laughs> and, if, and if we all should but don't, what does the future look like in 50 mm -hmm. years? I mean, if, if, we, if we don't get our acts together and we have this paradigm shift eh, and a change in mindset, maybe through the economic crisis and other things, that are going to happen when we simply will heat up this planet, we will okay, extract all the groundwater in certain regions, uh, so we will probably uh, slash down the last rainforests uh, and then the world will not be able to feed 9 billion people. And this would mean in the worst case scenario, which I hope will never happen, but we will have sort of global violence, huh? because what are people doing if they are hungry, if they are thirsty, if we cannot get a decent place for shelter, I mean, they get aggressive, of course, or we migrate. Huh? So in the end, we could have hundreds of millions angry people wandering across that planet. Huh? And how could you ensure national security under this perspective? Huh? So it would be a very, very uncomfortable uh, planet in the end. Uh, so, but as I said, I hope such a conference here is not changing the mindset. Uh, it can be a tiny little part of, of a transformation process. Uh, and I think to come back to what you asked earlier, I mean, the po political conference here in Copenhagen could make a difference based on the scientific evidence now. If real leadership would be exerted would be applied. That means Mr. Obama has to come here, huh? and Mr. Brown, and Mrs. Merkel, and, uh, and all this, and Mr. Sarkozy, and all these people. And of course, heads of state of China and India. I would have to say, yes, we see we are in a big crisis. We are in big trouble. It's the time for leadership now. I mean, if, for example, the US president would stay away, I think it would be a very bad sign. Huh? and nobody would really take the result seriously again. So, it's the time where heroes can be created, but also villains. Uh.